Hello, I'm Roberto and we are Learning Rust. We also have here Luciano. Hello. If you don't know uh, this channel, in this channel we talk about Rust and technologies. You can find a recording on previous stream on YouTube. And if you are watching us on YouTube, we stream every Monday, today, Wednesday, but cool. The Wednesday is the new morning, Monday, 6 p.m. <laughs> Dublin time on Twitch. Uh, today we are going to do a uh, stuff that we never did before. We are going to create uh, a command line tool uh, that is you that will take a zip containing images, extracting the images, scaling them, and saving them in the local uh, storage. Is this correct, Luciano? Yes, and we have some people in the chat. Hello, Astra Kernel and Josley Facchini. Great to see you here. And yes, today we have a special guest, Ferris, is going hopefully to help us in this endeavor. Yeah, Ferris will be our co-pilot today. Exactly. He's going to be very <laughs> silent, but he's going to send us sub subliminal messages to be better. He will judge us. us. <laughs> he will judge us. Okay, so should I share my screen and we'll try to get into it? Yeah, so let's... Uh tell again what we are going to do. We are going to take a zip file containing mm -hmm. the images on the command line. Mm -hmm. the, we want utility that is taking uh, the file name as a parameter, I suppose, Luciano, yes? Yeah. Reading it, extracting the images, resizing them, and saving them. Exactly, yes. So, and ideally, what we want to achieve is to be able to read directly from the zipped stream. So being able to select files that are actually images in that zip stream and read directly that stream through a library. So we don't want to unzip everything first, then scan that folder and then use data from that folder. Yeah, we want to do everything on the fly. We don't want to touch the file system. Exactly. Yeah. Only whatever we produce at the end is going to be saved in the file system, unzipped. Yeah, but... but we want to process on the fly from the zip. So yeah, let's uh, let's try to explore. There are two crates that we believe we can use today, and this is something we haven't done before. So we are going to be trying together, and all the suggestions are well accepted. So let let's try to understand these two crates. Just uh, first. a question to clarify. Mm -hmm. A question to clarify: the zip file that we are going to use only contains images, but could contain also other kind of files. We could decide that. Right now we have a test zip that we created from a website that Roberto you found that is very cool. I'm going to post it in the chat called unsample.net. And basically this website allows you to create literally a zip file with n images. You can select how many images, you can select the size of every image and it will create a zip file for you with all these images. So it is only images, just because it's coming through this website. But we can try to add more stuff and then try to filter that. Yeah, out. Let's start. Let's start simple. It goes through all the files of the zip and try to rescale them. Then on failure, if it's not an image, for example, or if it fails to rescale the image, could be I don't know for mm -hmm. any corrupted image or whatever. We will see how to handle the error case. Yeah, we also have Tommaso in the chat. So a lot of Tommaso, hopefully you'll be able to help us. Okay, yeah, can, so can, let's yeah. look at the zip crate first and let's try to just do the basic hello world. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, so this is an external crate, by the way. So we will need to install it and then let's see how we can use it. <clears throat> so is there an example? Let's see. I think zip archive is what I saw before the beginning of this episode. Okay, so this one looks interesting. So let's see what we can do. We can create a new zip archive with a reader. And I believe the reader means something that we probably will need to deep dive a little bit more, but it's like a, a generic source of data, a generic reader could be already everything in memory, like bytes in memory, or could I be something a, from... Yeah, but I think uh, a file handler is uh, implementing for sure the read and the seek. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine that that's the case as well, but I like the fact that this is a generic thing. 
that could come from different places maybe even s3 right doesn't have to be the file system yeah uh, then what they do is they do this zip.len which i imagine just gives you the number of files and then they do zip by index i and probably gives them the file now i imagine that this is some kind of object that can also be read but also has properties like name and they use this uh, copy to just copy to the standard output in this example now what we will want okay, to do is... so yeah go ahead yeah we have to okay we can do this we have to also look how to parse the command line so to, because mm -hmm. we say we pass the name of the file on the command line but how do we take the parameter from the command line into the application mm -hmm. and uh, in theory out of this uh, we will have uh, a, a, an object for every file in the zip and we should look at this point in the crate that resides the image in what they take as an input because if uh, they take if we can pass directly this file object of this type directly into the resizer it will be nice but depends on the api that is mm -hmm. available on the other crate okay so let's maybe start with just trying to print the list of files which means we will need to be able to get the command uh, from the command line the name of the file uh, create some kind of file handler for that initialize this zip archive with that file under file handler and then just use this method here and this file name like we just stop here we don't okay. do this part Cool. Okay. So let me just start by, so we created a very basic project with cargo new, and we just downloaded a set of uh, images zip from that particular website, but we haven't installed any dependencies. So the first thing we need to do is cargo add zip. And then I don't even know how to read arguments from the CLI in a kind of basic way. I've used a crate called CLAP, which allows you to build fully fledged CLIs, but that feels a bit too much. So I'm just going to do I a mean, quick Google. Depends. Yeah, we could just uh, go by airborne and read the parameters, but uh, what mm -hmm. if uh, then we wanted to be able to specify the, okay, you have to resize the images. We resize to what dimension mm -hmm. we can start our coding this dimension in the code but then uh, it would be nice to have a parameter dash yeah, dash absolutely. Um, x and then you specify the new x of the image but uh, oh, okay, there you go so layers. this seems to be a good example so i'm just going to copy paste all of this for now and basically what we want to do is import this and get the args and basically what we can do is uh, let file name equal args dot pop and then expect uh, a file name provider thank you copilot and then what we would we want to do is just can we modify args because pop is going to modify args correctly i think we can we just need to make it mutable of course okay which is a very good point i always forget that cool so let's just run this and this should explode right because we are not providing any we are not passing yet. any provide any file exactly so it should not be happy did it do anything did it just fail okay let's, to... let's run it here Cargo <laughs> it should not say it should no name fail provided. right that was my expectation ah but well uh wait args of zero is the file isn't args of zero the name of the file and is printing target the bug and zippy oh yes good point args of zero args of zero is the name of the file is args of one that is the first uh... so what we want to do is keep one right after the collect or before the collect uh before doesn't matter i mean we just don't care about the name of the executable no no i mean uh, if skipping before or after the dot collect 
Oh no, before, because this will be like an iterator thing, okay. I imagine. This okay, let, let's try again. So now we should print test.txt. It does. And if we remove this, it should just fail. Perfect. Okay, that makes sense. Now it makes more sense. Good intuition, Roberto. I... Okay, so the next step is we want to see how to open a file. Yes. And then we, we can use that for the zip. We have to pass that file handler to the exactly. zip function. And because I don't know that either, we need to Google again. So apologies for nice. that. We never opened a file in Rust. It's incredible. <laughs> exactly. That's something to be ashamed of. Okay, that Shame seems that seems pretty good. So file prelude. There is a file create there. There must be like a file open. There you go. So this looks pretty good. Mutable. Nice. One mutable. It even shows how to read an entire the entire content of the file into a string. So I'm just going to copy all of this and we will. The edit. file is mutable because probably there is a sick pointer in it. Mm -hmm. And when you read it, it should be moved and changed. So why they include the prelude is uh, probably because the, it contains the trait for like generic read and write. Ah, um, okay. But this is a good question. We should look for more details. Or we can try to remove it and see what it complains about. Also that. Okay, so let me also copy this one, which is very interesting. So if it fails. We are just going to propagate the IO error. So we can remove all of this. Well, we need the OK. Now that we run something, yeah. Yeah, now that we have a return type. So does this fail? It does fail because, oh, yeah, it's just telling us that we don't use it. So it's, I think it's just a warning. So what if we just print file? Does it implement display? OK, can we just do uh, this? How is it? I always forget this syntax. Comma. OK, that seems to be happy. Of course, it's telling us it is mutable, but you don't do anything to yeah. it. So why, did why are you? Use? We will need to make it mutable, I think, later when we introduce the zip. Now, the prelude is complaining for some reason. I suppose that if we go back here, maybe the prelude is needed for this uh, read to string, mm -hmm. which we are not using here. So it kind of complains, like, why are you importing it? So let's try to run this. Uh, we do cargo run dash dash images dot zip. Okay, it did. It was able to read the file. We have a file descriptor. It's giving us the full path. Read through write false. I don't know why write okay. false, but whatever. We just want because to we open now. it. We open it read only. <laughs> Yes, but we didn't. If you want to that. open uh, read write, uh, because probably by default the mode is read only. Mm. We need to be sure that we specified. I don't know if it is like other languages, read binary, because uh, for example Python you can read read binary and uh, mm -hmm. read the text, uh, and uh, and if you do stuff around vice because it's a zipped file, it's not a text file. You have uh, errors if. Um, but well, we try to pass. Whatever we have to the zip crate, and if it's not good, it will just crash. Okay, so let's continue to the next step. We want to introduce. Well, let's Starting copy all of this. We don't have to defer the closing like in Go. We don't have to close to use a with statement like in Python. Um, is Rust magically closing the file for us? Uh, I think I know the answer to this one. So Rust, because it uses that model where it can allocate and deallocate memory automatically based on, on usage, uh, mm -hmm. is what is called RIIA, I think, resource uh, 
Ooh, what's what's the meaning of that? Basically, when you use a resource, it means that you are allocating it. But when you stop using it, it can automatically deallocate it. So my understanding is that this file can track the entire like cycle of the handle. When it goes out of scope, when it gets dropped, it will it close closed. the file for us. Okay. Uh, R I I A resource initialization is allocation, something like that. Please correct me if you remember that. I was just curious, <laughs> making a parallel with other languages that you should handle the closing a little bit more explicitly. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, I believe that this read and seek were in this prelude, so this is not going to work straight away. Actually, let's try to save. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't have those. So if we re-enable this, it does find this. Okay, we the... we don't want the copy. We just want to print the file, the names. file names. So what we can do here is just say that, yes. And now is this going to be enough? Uh, file is mutable, so it's complaining. Sorry, let me make this a little bit smaller. I hope it's still readable for everyone. No, it's uh, completely readable, don't worry. Okay, okay line, so... line 18 is saying that zip uh, yeah, this file one... is mutable, but it's not asking us to make a file mutable on line 8. So, mm. okay. yeah, maybe because we are just reading, and for reading it, we don't need to. To do yeah, but special. even reading is going to seek the file. But well, let's try. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's run this. This is going to explode because yeah, we are not providing the file name. So let me do this properly. Yeah, you have to do that from a terminal. Cool. This seems to be working. It's giving us all the images that are in this file. Okay, so then what's the next? And step? this giving us a file as a as a file handler, so something that is implementing read and seek, probably. So mm -hmm. at this point, we have to see how to pass that to the... Um, we can make an iterator, that list content can become an iterator that give us... Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Give us a generator. We don't have generators in, uh, in Rust. But Not we can, yet. We can make a iterator that basically is the same. Yeah. Okay, so we have a bunch of interesting comments by Astra Kernel. Thank you for those. So the first one is, unless you read it, you don't need mutable, which is a good point. And follow-up so, comment, which clarifies that, is that read to string function needs a, a mutable handler. So if we were using read to string, then at that point it will force us to, to basically have something mutable. To have the file under to be mutable. Okay, okay. so how can uh, we return an iterator there? I asked it first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there me... is something in the chat. Uh, somebody, VS Code change team, 220 shells. What is that? Oh, yeah, I think I disabled that. So sorry, Jocelyn. Perfect. I, I can. <laughs> I don't know if I can try to re-enable. You can it. change team anyway. Yeah. Let me see if I can re-enable it for you. Team. There you go. Oh, I need to sign in. I probably. You can tell us your password. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you're seeing my password live. No, you're not. Okay, maybe now works. I'm not going to guarantee that, but you can try again <laughs> if you are uh, very brave. Why it's saying disconnected? Okay. Don't try again. You can put some ridiculous team. Okay, zip implements iterator. So that could be a good suggestion. So we already have an iterator that is doing that. Oh, it's a ask. question, like get files. We, we can see. Let's see what we have here. If we just do zip, what do we get? So we have by index, 
index decrypt by name name decrypt file names okay that's already an iterator so maybe that's what we okay. want yeah but only with the names i would like uh, the, the the file handler exactly no this one is giving us only the names i believe because it's an iterator okay. of uh, string uh, slices okay is there a way to have uh... let's see if there is dot files file names no there is no dot files right so i believe that yeah we we have to create it yeah yeah and... also i believe that there is another problem here because if this function is creating the zip file it cannot return an iterator over this zip file which will go away so there is like a problem with references here basically okay let's implement that for now in the easy way mm -hmm. we should we'll probably just move everything into one function for now and then we can check yeah. And then we can, we can refactor, refactor everything out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we also have WGAF in the chat. Hello, how are you? Everybody's so, here today. Yeah, thank you for joining. We missed you. We have to move the we have to move the lives to Wednesdays. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's move all this logic here. Let's move. Yeah, let's do one function to rule them all. Exactly. Uh, reader is going to be file and now what we want to do is this and we should be doing something now, this doesn't change yet uh, we can remove the prelude because we are not explicitly mentioning the traits yet okay this shouldn't change much so if we run this again it should still work as before else okay now the next now. step is to look at that image crate, crate yeah right yeah the image crate uh, or what we could do is to try to read the um, i believe that to use that image crate we will need to allocate all the bytes somewhere in memory and then use those bytes to initialize the image so now let's maybe... see, let's see what let's see what the crate takes as an okay input. good point so we have an image reader which can take either a file or a cursor on bytes which i believe okay. is probably what we want to use yes a, a cursor on bytes we already have uh, the file handler is the file handler a cursor uh, I think cursor is a concept. Oh no, it's a generic concept in the standard. Yeah, it's generic. Okay. Oh, we can try. Come on, we can definitely read as evacuate. I imagine just allocate the byte somewhere and then create a cursor out of that. And at that point, we'll yeah. But I was uh, I was more thinking of uh, image reader new and passing uh, the file handler directly there and see if he's complaining. Mm, good question. We can try that, and if it doesn't work, we can fall back. Yeah, to this we one. have to fall back to a vector of u8 and doing a cursor on top of the vector of u8. But in theory, a file point, a file handler is already a cursor on top of bytes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, we need to install it first. Cargo add image. So cool. you are telling me that all the good names are already taken for cargo crate. Yes. Yeah. So Zip inside the image, for I'm not aware. Sorry, inside there is a for... comment here in the chat. Anyway, you can create your wrapper around the zip file and iterate over there. Yes, that's definitely a good suggestion. But as usual, we'll keep it simple for now. And once we have something working, we'll see how to improve it. Okay, so let me copy paste this stuff for now. We definitely want this to. And then what we want to do is this zip file, hopefully, is already something that we can just pass to the image reader. So let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah, let's see what they think about. File. 
and then with guest format i guess and the code yeah. because uh, reading from a file probably is using the extension of the file to get to to infer the type but when you have just binary data you have to infer from the header of the file probably yeah, that's and, what it uh, does it's not complaining for now it's not complaining i'm curious to just do another print ln you of... can't you do a dbg uh oh that didn't work image dimension mm -hmm. interesting okay what is it missing doesn't satisfy buff reader, buff reader. Do we have some methods we can use here? Let's see. Into try to here is uh, file. Oh, you can also get directories, so that could be interesting. Try again to write uh, image reader new, and then see what Copilot was suggesting because it was suggesting. A lot of stuff with a cursor, I think. Okay, so let's try to trigger copilot. image reader new copilot cursor new file bytes. Okay, let's try if this makes it up here. I don't think there is a bytes one. Yeah, there isn't. Mm. So we will need to do that other step where we allocate okay. the bytes ourselves. Yeah. Okay, I, because it's not a proper file, it's a zip file, so it has mm -hmm. some slightly different. Uh... Okay. Okay. I so... hope I hope it's giving us the, the files bytes and not the compressed bytes. Oh, good point. Uh, let's try another thing first. Let's try here mm -hmm. to just say format. I think those were JPG, right? Uh, there was here JPG, an example. Yeah. There you go, image, and probably there is an equivalent JPG. JPEG. I doesn't like it. Is it the same problem, I wonder? Oh, takes zero argument. Is it with format? Oh, this is right too. So what if we just say the code without guessing the format? Ah, uh, try, I have no idea. Now he's complaining that buff read is not implemented and not seek is not implemented too. On this file. Okay, so let's try the fallback approach. Where yeah, the cursor on top of bytes. Exactly. So let's say let bytes equal um back. file dot what? What am I doing? And this is a vec of U8. It's going to be mutable. Sorry, there are a lot of comments in the chat that I'm ignoring. So Tomas is saying it is common, don't know why, to not bind the structure and the new method to the traits, but only the methods that needs to needs the bind so you can construct it but invoke noting i'm not sure i'm following there i might need an example no, me neither but okay <laughs> okay so now my understanding is that we can do std io copy the file into the bytes right and we should have the bytes and now we can do a cursor over the bytes so course or uh, new was it on bytes and then with get format 
still doesn't like that the code. Why? No method the code for enum result. Oh, do we need to unwrap the guess? Uh, you, there was a question mark there, yes. Okay. Now this one doesn't like it because it's probably a different kind of error that is not just IO result. So I'm going to be doing a crappy thing and just going to say, uh, how is it, box uh, in error. Let's see if my memory is correct. Uh, yes. Okay. Does that work? Oh, I can never remember how to do this. So what I want to do is a generic uh, error, error that will uh, not be only a your error, but it will be everything. Come on, give me the error. Oh, do I need this plus static? Oh yeah, it needs to be a result of this. Now, yes, that makes sense. Now, why doesn't like dimensions? Because probably doesn't even exist. Image, what do we get in the image? Nothing. Really? We just print the image. Okay, doesn't like file because it's not mutable. Oh, should okay, we try this? Now, okay, but what is image? Is a dynamic image, but yeah, obviously has to compile the new crate that we installed. Yeah, which is going to take a while. Ah, it's already there. Come on. The last two crates take forever. Yeah, the last five, the last five percent takes half of. Oh the my time. god, it's printing ah! all the bytes. <laughs> all the bytes of the image. <laughs> That's okay. not what we, we wanted. We have something. Okay, now what there is stuff there. on top of that uh, because it was not the comp the crate was not compiled, so it was not able to. Is there a dimensions? Size dimensions. Why it doesn't autocomplete? Come on. Okay, let's check the documentation like real people. Yeah. So uh, dynamic image is what we got. Let's see what mm -hmm. kind of methods do we have. Oh, because it's an enum. It could be one of those things. Okay, let's see anyway what kind of methods there are. Uh, there is a blur, brighten, color, crop, filter, flip, grayscale, into bytes. There is an eight. The problem is the image eight. Ooh, that's so there will be a one. width. There will be a width. So I think. Cool. Also. So uh, let's do this. Is a method or a property? Uh, I think it's a method. So width mm -hmm. come first, right? And yep. image height uh, emg yeah okay so we expect them to be all the same because that tool that we use to generate the zip allows you to specify the width and height of every image but then you get images that are equally sized so let's see yeah. yes that seems to be what we want and it takes a while because it's decompressing the files from the zip in memory mm -hmm. and reading it. And the, and we are running in debug mode and not in release mode also. Because... Yeah, that might also have an effect. Okay, now we want to resize that, you said, and save mm -hmm. them to the disk. Yes, so there was a crop method I saw there. Let's but see if there crop is a resize. Is, yeah, exactly. It's not resizing, it's cropping. There is a resize, resize exact and resize to fill, which I like the fact that there are three of them. 
because let's say for instance that we want to resize to 400 by 400 which is not going to match the aspect the ratio, ratio of, of yeah. the input file uh, we have we probably put some uh, black band around it is dimension the, is not working is dimensions not working i don't know it didn't work in, in my autocomplete so let's try again uh, there is dimensions now maybe because it was not autocompleting what does it give us dimension oh yeah just a table with the two numbers so okay let i'm curious to try that now Okay, yeah, that works. Cool. For some reason, it didn't work before. There's so, a suggestion to create the vector with capacity instead of empty vector. Uh, ooh, probably on the question. zip file, there is the size. On the yes, zip file and it needs object. to be the size uncompressed. So let's see if yeah. that's the case. I don't know if it is the size uncompressed. Um, uh so let's see if we can do this basically what tom is suggesting with capacity and then what we want to take is file dot so there is compressed with... size is there uncompressed, there is uncompressed. um so there is size which is probably this one i imagine yeah because if there is compressed the size and size probably size is the uncompressed one yeah why doesn't like this one? Oh, because this is a U64 as U size. That should do the trick. Okay, let's try that. Should still work as before, except it should be a little bit more efficient because it can pre-allocate the right amount up front. Yeah, it's a little bit faster. Yeah, okay. If you can benchmark that this way, I don't know. No, no, it was faster. Mm. <laughs> looking at it okay that's pretty good thank you Tommaso for the suggestion uh, so the three sizes what we want to use yes which one do we want to use I think resize to fill inspires me yeah. as what we want Sounds to do good. resize the image using the specified filter algorithm returns a new image the image aspect ratio ratio is preserved the image is scaled to the maximum possible size that fits within the larger relative to aspect ratio of bounds specified by n width and n height then crop to fit within the outer bound let's try uh, what is filter type good question we'll probably need to figure it out okay nearest triangle gaussian whatever it's just i suppose the anti-aliasing thing yeah it's the algorithm if you go to a smaller image mm -hmm. you want to take the nearest you want to do an average uh, you want to do yeah stuff okay so let's go back there very quickly so we want to use resize to fill pass for instance 400 by 400 a filter and we should get back a new dynamic image that then we can persist that then we can save can we save it directly or let's see let's try to get the image first so mm -hmm. let uh, scaled emg equal emg dot why i don't get autocomplete today the size to fill fill and we say 400 by 400 the filter is uh, uh, Lanxos. Okay, Lanxos. Okay, so now we have a new image. And I want to just print the dimension of this image. Let's see what happens. We should see 400 by 400 everywhere. Tommaso say to avoid the as you size in line 17, probably, and try use a try from the uh, use size try from unwrap. Otherwise, in release mode, there is an overflow issue. Cool. Okay, that's a good suggestion. We will try. Now so, this is working because now it's slower because it's resizing, so it's doing a work. Mm -hmm. 
but the output the size is the one that we want. Uh, in line 17, uh, there is the suggestion in the chat if you, okay, you already highlighted it, you are so efficient. So in line, uh, where is it? As you said. Yeah. So what yeah. Tomás I think is... Was, uh, I think was talking about that because, yeah. So it's try from? Try no, it was uh, you size, try from, unwrap. I was using the static method on you size. So you size colon colon, uh, lowercase u. Yeah, okay. Try from. Try from. This value, By size. and then we can probably use the question mark to just propagate mm, okay. the error. Because of course, I, I believe the difference that if there is an overflow here, this is just gonna return an error, mm -hmm. rather than uh, I don't know overflowing or doing something unexpected. Right? Can you confirm that, Tommaso? So here we get an yeah. explicit error rather than. An undefined behavior. Yeah, because on some system, a U size is smaller than in the 64 mm -hmm. bits. So, like when we did the Raspberry Pico stuff, that we had to be aware that U size was not so, mm -hmm. it was better to use proper types with the size. So, uh, now we want to save that scaled image, right? Yes. How do we save it? We can do that I, I uh, right? No, but there was not something uh, in the image documentation to write. Good point. If we go back to the original thingy, write to Me? cursor new. Oh, this was writing into bytes. Can you write two files directly? I wonder if there is just a write method. Let me try very quickly. Scaled image dot write to it still needs a file reader well whatever is writable it so needs we can a file probably, writer we can probably create just a file writer yeah uh, so let's just call it test file and the format we want to have what kind of format PNG. The same of the input, uh, the same of the input. We don't have the format in the input image somehow. Let's we do always a JPEG. go to JP, JPG. Okay, let's go. Let's do a JPEG. It. So we also try the conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, but just out of curiosity, in that uh, EM, EMG, is mm -hmm. there the type of uh, or the format because it's a with guessed format or when you load the image you lose track of the file type it comes from good question i think there might be a format in the scaled one i don't know because it's resized in the original emg i'm more positive oh there is also save with format what is taking a Q, which is image. Save the buffer to a file that's at the specified path in the specified format. So Q is a string. The no, idea is yeah, not too obvious. We'll need to open the documentation. Meanwhile, yeah. we add a new follower, Whittington. Thank you very much for following. Welcome here. How are you? Okay. It's an enum. What is an enum Q? Uh, okay, let, let's do one thing at a time. So let's yeah, try to make sorry. this work first and then we'll try to change it. So let test file, uh, file create. Is, is it what we want? It seems so. Uh, I think this name... just creates a new file. Do we want to keep the file that was in the zip? Why that not? That would be file.name. Would be file.name. Name, name but we have to remove the extension. Row. Okay, name. Uh, let's keep the extension for now. Would be whatever .png .jpg, and then we'll do that. Okay. 
I'm sure that there is a path to utility that easily allows you to remove the stench. Now he's complaining that it should be mutable. Which probably makes sense. Now he's complaining of the semicolon. No. Oh, this one might. I'm just. Yeah, I should do that. And now JPEG is uh, an enum. What does it want? U8. Do we need to pass anything? Do you we have need to pass, pass to the form. A number. Uh, what kind of what number? number? Specified quality, okay. So, ah, the quality 100. Yeah, okay. Now, why doesn't like destination file because wants a mutable reference to it? Cool, we might have something. So, it will save in the current folder, it will save it, I believe, in the current folder right now, okay. Because we want to create where... a, we want to create an output folder and add output in front of the image Good name. Point. Let's do that. Uh, output slash, and then what we do is uh, here mkdir output. We run this guy. Let's Ooh. see what happens. A nice award. There is a JPEG JPEG. So yeah, it is doing something. What is that general? It's an unused import. There is, oh, yeah, we probably imported by mistake while trying different methods. So, can you show us what's in that image? Yes. Okay, it cool. doesn't look uh, um, like it changed the aspect ratio. So this is what we wanted. Create like a thumbnail, they are, basically. Yeah, they are put the thumbnails. Uh, the original ones, for example, if you open uh, this file, the original one. I wonder if we can open it here. Nope. Okay, I'm just going to open Finder. And we copy this because macOS otherwise will move. Oh no, it doesn't remove. Okay, good. Let's see the original files. So this was the first one, second one, third one is the same as the first one. Yeah, random. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, okay. they are the same pictures. Good. Nice. And all of them were created. And yeah, I like that it's not um, shrinking them in a weird way. Like it's not destroying the aspect ratio. Yeah, yeah, he's keeping, uh, he's just cropping in the middle because we asked for a square aspect ratio, but the original one was not square. So it's just. Uh... Okay, very good. So what can we do next? Remove the extension. Right. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? That's uh, one of the questions. Uh, file name here is just a string, I imagine. Yes, it's not. Okay, let's see if Rust has a base name. Like in Node.js, I would have used the path base name utility. So Rust file name base name. Let's see what we have here. Pat new. What can we do with a pat? It returns a pat object. And in a pat object. There are the methods in on the left. New. There is the dot extension. So if there is dot extension, there should be. File, file prefix. What is file prefix? Oh, this is nightly. Great, so is there uh, start with strip prefix uh, with extension? Oh, we have a new follower, Shipyak. Shipy ABC, sorry. Thank you for following us. How are you today? 
Uh, try to look at just name at this point. Yeah, if a file name comes without extension. Yeah. Seems no, this so. one will just give you no full txt. Ah, no, it's also giving you the destination. Okay, nothing. Hmm. File stem, maybe. Okay. So if you do. Ah, yeah, first. Yeah, if you do foo.rs, it gives you foo. So that's what we want, mm -hmm. I believe. So it's path new of that string dot file stem question mark. Okay, so sheep ABC is saying that the stream is buffering from time to time. Hopefully, it's not on our side because I see a green block there on my OBS. But yeah, let us know if that continues. Not that I can do anything right now, but at least yeah. we know. <laughs> Change your internet connection. You need a better one. Yes, please donate money to me for a better. Yeah, so you will buy the, the my own satellite. Point. Yes. Not okay. Not one. Rent them <laughs> for me, Elon. So we want to do this path new. Mm -hmm. And find uh, stem. What is the so standing for? Stemming? My knowledge of English is limited. So let... Um, actually, we need to do this base before. Name. Let let file... base name. Let's just say let name equal path new of what? file dot name file dot name is okay but I don't know why copilot is giving us today copilot is having a very low score dot file stem path or... needs to be imported do and this is the... giving us do you a want path? To do the dot do you want to do the dot file stem uh, I wanted to do here okay but tell me why dot... I don't know. Because you want to keep the oh, extension for name later. Name dot file stem. I think you need a question mark because file stem can't fail because it's an option. Indeed, good point. Can the question mark? Can we just use a question mark with an option? I don't think so. We can do uh, okay. Okay, is it just okay? okay Have the expression in a result. Is I'm that the way you do it? I mean, le let me try and wrap just to see if there is another error there. Probably there is. The question mark operator can only, I'm not using the question mark anymore. I am confused. Is your clippy behind the two versions of the code? Oh, I think I'm missing some parentheses. That's probably what's going on there. Okay, now back here. Why does it like unwrap? Doesn't implement display because it's uh right it's an os string can we do as str what is uh, an os string yeah i i think i i know why this is the case basically because the operative system file name is not necessarily a utf8 um, okay so, so it's kind of have, uh... protecting us because rust wants all the strings to be utf8 compliant okay and now you convert that or you don't use format but file create wants a string uh i wonder if we can just convert it in to ascii gives us the, to os string to str okay which is an option because of course this can fail Right, if it's not a valid UTF-8 thing. So mm -hmm. let's do again an unwrap and we'll see how to fix the unwrap in a second. I just want to see if this works to do remove unwrap. 
you fool. Okay, let's see if this works for now. So what we expect to happen is that we are not going to see that .jpg, .jpg, but just whatever file name .jpg. So image one .jpg. Okay, let's go there. Output. Yeah, seems to be working. Cool. Okay. Now, I'm gonna uh, stop before it refactoring, there. do we want to be able to provide that 400 as a parameter? Uh, maybe. Let's fix the unwrap first. Okay. So I remember, but I don't remember the method, and I'm sure that Tommaso is going to kill us because he, he told mm -hmm. us this multiple times. There is a way to convert options into results. And I remember something like, okay, right? Wrap the expression in no, a result. Okay. No, it doesn't okay. seem that. You want to do the other way around. You don't want to wrap it. We should already wrap it. Basically, we want to throw an error if that doesn't work. So how to convert an option to a result with a specific error, basically. So we also need so to provide you have, the error somehow. You have to look at something that is returning not an option on the right side, but a T. And it is uh, returning an option of T, this guy. Option but, we of... just want, but we just want a T. Uh, we want the result so we can use the question mark. Right? Yeah. Or but not? Does it make sense or not? If you do a result, then you do the question mark. You don't have out of the results again an option. Oh, no, no, no. It will unwrap the value at that ah, point. Okay. Let's try with OK then. Because the question mark is like an unwrap. But if it fails, propagate the error. So it's a mm -hmm. little bit of a, it's like a returning a, an error variant, basically. So let me search for that since the chat is not helping us and Tommaso is not raging. Rust yeah, yeah, he went, uh, option. He went to the error. Okay, let's see what they say here. So this one is using anyhow, which is another crate we will need to install. But it's doing section dot get. I don't know what a section is. Okay, or okay or else methods to convert options to result. Right, but then what's the error? So we can use this okay or, but we will need to provide a reasonable default. Or or is the error type maybe? Let's see, okay or, yes, okay, perfect. So here what we can say is uh, um, invalid file stem. Mm, okay, invalid file name, um, see. And here, what we can say again is to str and okay or what copilot did invalid file stem, invalid file name. Yeah, invalid file name encoding. Because there is uh, complaining if the encoding of the file name is something uh, mm -hmm. strange. Are we using any more unwrap? We are not. Okay, so let's just make sure that this works. It's not exploding. So it did the first file, so I'm confident this works. So now you were suggesting to do the 400 thing as a parameter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
that we can do in a, the horrible fashion of args pop uh, trying to integer mm -hmm. and okay. say second parameter should be an integer. Let that is... file size. Um, what is it? A U64, I guess. Yeah, more than more than file size is image size or image width or it's not the file size. Image, the image size. size. For now, let's just take one value and we make it square. Okay. So we do args dot pop um, or else. No, unwrap or and we put 400 there. String. Mm -hmm. That's the fold. And then parse and question mark. Now we have the image size. And we say there that we want to use image size and image size. Ooh, it doesn't like that because it needs to be a U32. So roll back, U32. And now let's delete these two. And if we rerun this with also, it's going to overwrite if the image is already existing or is going oh, to Oh, yeah, fail. let's try that. Let's go with 50. So it should be very small. Hopefully, it's going to be also much faster. Now, the sizing depends on the image, on the input more than the, on the output. Okay, invalid the, digit. Not like that. Why is that. 50 is not a valid digit. Oh, yeah. When you do pop, <laughs> is it getting them in the opposite order? Ah, yeah, you're popping 50 and then the name. Yes. So, yes, so you have to want switch to... the... Yeah, uh, you have to do... You have is to there swap... like an unshift? Uh, can't you swap line 10 with 11 and you're done? No, because then the default doesn't work anymore. Right? Ah, right, right. Yes, you're right. So there is a pop left that you want. Not mm -hmm. a pop. Now we are popping right. You want to pop left. So do we need to introduce a pop a back the queue to do that? I don't know. The, on the normal vector, there is no pop left. Pop. Oh, is it back or front? Uh, front. Let's try front. I'm confident. Pop the okay. front. Okay. Let's see what happens now. It didn't explode, so I think you guessed right. And we are starting to have images that are very small. Now let's try your uh, second suggestion to see. So it created three images, right? If we rerun this with 500, is it going to overwrite them? Ooh, yeah, it did. There was an interesting refresh there. Okay, so it's overwriting without telling you mm -hmm. anything. Good or bad depends on what you want as a behavior. We is could have checked the... if the file existed, right? If we wanted to be more... Yeah. Uh... If the file exists, throw an error, add a parameter to force the overwrite, another mm -hmm. parameter. But with three parameters at this point, I would like to use some crate that is handling them mm -hmm. in a proper way, like this dash dash something, dash dash something, and so on. And this is maybe something for the next session because we are almost mm -hmm. at time now. But yeah, there, there are crates, for instance, one I used in the past is called. Uh, Rust clap, which is a great name, by the way, because I think it means uh, CLI argument parser, common line argument parser. And this one gives us different ways to basically define which arguments or options are accepted, what type, and so on. And then it gives us uh, a nice way to create um, even helpers. So you can do dash dash help, and it gives you all the text with the usages and so on. So maybe next time we next can do time. a session on this one.
Yeah. Next time, I would also like to uh, not have a huge monolithic function, but try to do some composition. I mean, mm -hmm. zip file dot for each uh, um, dot uh, the the compress uh, dot uh, resize dot save mm -hmm. in a more chaining way, more functional yeah. way. Sorry, we can definitely think about that. So okay, do you, so do you want to do the wrap up? Yeah, let's wrap up everything. Are you doing it or should I do it? So, yeah, so, a moment. Uh, <laughs> give me a moment. So, let's wrap up. Uh, you can find the recording on YouTube. The link is on the Twitch channel in the about session. If you're watching this on YouTube, we do live streaming on Twitch, typically on Monday, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Dublin time. Today, we did that Wednesday. Make sure to check the Twitch link in the YouTube description and give us a follow so you can be notified. Feel free to leave comments, open PR. I think we will put this code in a repository one mm -hmm. somewhere. So look. Uh, we'll uh, definitely be on ones. YouTube uh, shortly and the, in the YouTube description, we will have the link to the repository. Perfect. So if you want to leave a pull request, leave it there. Everything is accepted. We are trying to learn Rust. Don't expect our solution to be beautiful. But often they works. Um, if you know better ways of doing stuff, please let us know. Uh, thank you for all the collaboration in the chat. Thank you to the new subscribers. And uh, are we going to raid somebody? Yes, is... we are going to raid Coding with Luke, who is always doing interesting challenges in JavaScript. So if JavaScript is something okay. you, you care about, that might be interesting for you. So see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.